Hello everyone, welcome back to Touch Fire Twice. I'm Joshua and I'm here today to do an in-depth sniff review of the Boy Smells candle, Park Life. Uh, Park Life is, first of all, it is a collaboration with the Scandinavian fashion brand Ghani, G-A-N-N-I. Transparently, wasn't familiar with them before I saw the name on this candle collaboration. But they seem like a sort of a renewable, sustainable uh, clothing company that is, again, based I believe it is Scandinavian, but it is available, uh, if not worldwide, in, in many countries around the world. And so Boy Smells did a collaboration with that brand, as they've done a couple of collaborations, um, most notably with Casey Musgraves and their Slow Burn Candle, which I have owned for a couple of years, and eventually I will get around to actually reviewing, because I really do love uh, the Slow Burn Candle, in addition to, of course, loving the wonderful Casey Musgraves. But today we're going to talk about Park Life. Um, so to give a little bit of, again, background on the candle before we get into the scent, this is sort of indirectly part of their Hyper Nature collection. Um, so their Hyper Nature collection, as you can see, uh, what they say is to, again, the branding here is, uh, I'm gonna read some of this to you, is transport yourself to a kaleidoscopic scented multiverse where the beauty of nature is amplified by the power of science. Pimping nature, a series of sensorial simulations to awaken your inner alchemy, take your nature to the max. What is alchemy? Alchemy is an ancient branch of philosophy, uh, of natural philosophy. Uh, an alchemist really attempted to purify, mature, and perfect certain materials. So that's what this is going for. And this is a very, again, sort of a nature-focused collection. The traditional, there's a, a group of five candles that appear in this collection. There's Floor Shadow, Neopeche, Rhubarb Smoke, Agua de Jardin, and Polyamorous. So polyamorous with some amber in it, get it? Um, and so this one is sort of the unofficial official sixth to that collection, um, but specifically sits as a collaboration with Ghani that lives within the Hyper Nature collection. First, I will unbox. Um, so I always enjoy the packaging, straightforward and simple uh, from Boy Smells, um, but the nice touch of detail. So when you open it here, um, you do get, you know, that visual and there, the ingredients uh, nicely embossed with some metallic foil. And then we open it up here and it's such a pretty sort of mirrored metallic, like almost as if they like dipped the glass, as you can see there, there's mirror on the inside, dipped it into a metal. Um, so this is a really, again, it's hard to tell exactly on camera and it's reflecting a lot of the, the green walls around me, uh, but this really is a bright green. And the way they describe it, uh, is interesting. So they say, bring the outside in, the Boy Smells and Ghani collaboration. Park Life is an aromatic recreational scent. This scent pays tribute to the ethereal and grounding beauty of nature and the resurgence of park culture, weaving together fresh green notes of basil, fig, and sage with earthy accords of ginger, tonka, and sandalwood. So giving you six notes right at the top there, bringing greenery back to the forefront and making sure that we're, you know, connecting with nature as we all need to do. I, this this is a very boy smells candle um, in a sense that it's not gonna be a dewy green scent that is just fresh and bright and simple uh, or sporty. Uh, there's always a lot of depth um, to every boy smells candle that that I have sniffed thus far. Um, so let's really dig into the all of the notes because they do list more in depth notes on their website. Uh, and then I will tell you what I sniffed. Obviously, I have burned this. I burned this twice. The notes listed on their site include top notes of basil, clove buds, and ginger, mid of sage, fir balsam, galbanum, and fig, and then toward the middle bottom, we've got patchouli, vanilla, tonka beans, and sandalwood. So as I say often, a lot going on there, right? So you've got some herbaceous, you've got some spices, you've got some resinous botanicals, uh, you've got the depth of some some woods, um, the heady earthiness of the patchouli, green of top and mid, mid notes from your basils and your your figs. Um, so a lot going on. Right off the bat, I will say this this smells like it very much could be a body fragrance, like a traditional like 1970s 1980s kind of men's uh, men's perfume. Again, this is gender, non, non-gender specific. Side note, any fragrance, whether it's home or, you know, body fragrance, no matter who it's marketed toward or whether it's fruity and fresh or light and flirty or deep, dark, heavy, resinous, anyone can wear anything. It doesn't matter, man, woman, like, there's nothing to say that other than marketing and our own, like, heteronormative society, which... Don't, let's not get started on that. So wear what you like, period. So, but all that to say, 
this is reminiscent of what is marketed as sort of a men's uh, uh, parfum or cologne from back then. It just kind of reminds me when I was a kid. When I burned this, which you can see from the performance here, there was a, a heaviness from almost, I, I wrote down like a smoked clove or incense. Certainly clove and incense is often in, in wax together, um, but also patchouli, again, earthy. Can be a little bit green, but it gets a little bit heady, a little bit uh, dry and, and sort of toward incense. There's plenty of patchouli scented incense. So they're kind of like, uh, not interchangeable, but can be conflated a little bit, I think, when you're sniffing. The basil is there as a greenery, but it's almost like, rolled basil. It's not like a musky basil that's been sitting on the counter for a few days. It's not super fresh and bright. Um, it's almost like if you just like rolled, not fully dried it, but like if you just rolled the basil into a bundle and had it there, it's almost more of the green versus the specific peppery sweet elements you often get from basil. Um, then I noted you got some of the spice of ginger, I suppose, uh, but almost more like an accord of ginger versus true ginger because um, you don't get kind of that that bright sweetness that sometimes you get from ginger of, um, you know, smelling kind of like edible. There's no ginger note in here. Like sometimes you see in, you know, an orange, think of Bath & Body Works, orange ginger or aromatherapy or things where there's an obvious ginger. That's not really an obvious ginger. It's almost, if anything, like a ginger powder, I would say. Um, then I have here almost like a, a birch-like coolness to it. So birch can be kind of like wintergreen or, or things like that, but though there's not birch listed in here, there's fir balsam. Um, and so maybe that's what I was getting in sort of like a, a little bit of a coolness. Again, it's in the mid, it's not a, a lasting you know bottom note or a bright, fresh in your face top note, um, but it is it is there. So I'm saying, I can see kind of a birch or the balsam there just a little bit. Um, the fig is, I would say it's, a little bit powdery. It's not primary at all. And figs sometimes in some blends can kind of take over as, you know, a, a really an intense player to the game. It's very much in the mid notes. It's a bit there. Um, it almost, I kind of feel, see that playing with the sage. And to me, the sage also is like borderline dried sage. So not like a powdered sage you're going to cook with, but like, think of like, if you're going to smudge your room, uh, like that bundle of sage that's still, you know, it's not fully dried where it's going to flake apart. Um, but it's, you know, it doesn't have its moisture as if it's fresh and going to be chopped. Maybe even, and this is where mine was starting to go and, you know, getting into the alchemy that they want you to get into is like, almost like, um, like if you are smudging with sage and with that clove, because the clove is like a, to me is a smoked clove bud, um, playing with like the patchouli or an incense. It's almost as if like you had like the rolled sage and basil, uh, and fig and clove as like this bundle that's really like, that's a, that's kind of what this is giving me is like if you were actually almost like smudging something with that. Um, because it does lean, you know, it's not like just fresh in a park. It does lean a little bit more toward um, conceptual. And the other note I had there was the sandalwood uh, almost reminded me of like an amber because it's like, it's, it's not super heavy. It's a little bit creamy, but it almost feels, again, going back to those clove buds and like the smoked clove that I was getting from maybe it was patchouli, I don't know. Um, I felt like almost a, almost like it was burnt or singed. Like if you took like a little blowtorch to a, a fresh, you know, branch um, of sandalwood, it, it was dry, but then you singed it um, with uh, a little blowtorch or, or flame or something where it's just gonna release a little bit of it and be a little bit burnt, but it's not heavily burnt or smoking or embers, but it's not truly just a fresh, you know, uh, clean sandalwood. It's got something else to it. And when we look at also, the, interestingly, the middle note of galbanum uh, as an aromatic gum resin that's extracted from certain Asiatic plant species, like from the stems. Um, and it's considered to be an intense green fragrance with woody and balsamic elements. You can see why they put that in here because they want it to be green, but they always lean a little bit. You know, they play with the ideas of sort of masculine and feminine and, you know, genderful and genderless. Uh, and galbanum can be can, can be described as earthy or forest-like, um, valued for bringing sort of a rich, um, spicy green scent, which I would say, if you had to describe this as I'm going, bouncing all over the place from smoked clove and incense and some dried sage and a bit of fresh basil and some powdery fig and some, you know, uh, creamy sandalwood, like all these things all over the place, I would say, in a nutshell, how I would describe it is a rich, spicy, woody green scent. Um, but it's not the green scent that you're thinking of, like dewy bright spring times at all. Uh, it is, you know, the pictures that they show in their marketing are intense. I don't want to say overwhelming, but they are 
they're all in, they're gonna load you up. Uh, and, and that's really what this does. And as a single wick, that is uh, I, what I didn't describe from the beginning, they do a coconut and beeswax blend, eight and a half ounce candle. Um, it is a powerhouse. It will really throw very strongly with just that eight and a half ounce single wick. Uh, really good performance once it gets going. I will say, as I've experienced uh, with my other voice smells candles, I feel like it needs to be either in a hurricane or in a very warm room with little airflow as far as any sense of a draft. I live in a new construction home. There really aren't drafts um, and it's pretty consistent temperatures. But with this, I did have to do sort of, you know, any any candle uh, fans, you know, worst enemy best friend, sort of just a sleeve um, of just aluminum foil that to really get the full pool after a couple of hours, you just had to put this over it, kind of crimp it, fully leave everything exposed. Don't necessarily take my advice. Your mileage may vary. This could be a fire risk. I <laughs> do what you do. Be very careful. Burn as directed. <laughs> um, but what this will do is it just holds in. It radiates just enough heat to ensure that it gets fully pulled out to the edges if you're losing some of the heat by having the single wick. So again, that's something a lot of people do. Some people will put them in candle crocs or they will use a candle lamp or things like that. I prefer just to do the traditional burn for the most part. But every once in a while you do have to put a little bit of wrap just to keep in, hold in the warmth, but certainly putting it in a hurricane would do the same thing. Once I did that for a short period of time, it was fully pulled, a nice deep pool and performed well. Um, and on subsequent burns has also been a strong performer. So it's one of those things that uh, just happens based on different wax formulations and sizes and vessels and things like that. But you don't, uh, certainly don't want it to tunnel and then, you know, have it be an uneven burn where you lose some of the wax. That's that's not fun. I will say I went to Nordstrom um, because they did have all of the Hypernature collection, most of Boy Smells, in fact, in stock. I was able to sniff all of them. And this was the one that I really, that really spoke to me the most because it is strong, but I could feel a little bit more because I'm such a seasonal burner, could feel more of sort of a spring into summer vibe, which, you know, the park nature brought to me. But yeah, rich, slightly spicy, but still green. Um, but like a an interesting interpretation of green, not just your fresh cut greens or cilantro or just your herbal, your kitchen. This has elements of brightness, of, of green, but it's spicy. And there are depths to this that are super uh, surprising when you get into sort of the patchouli and the galbanum and, and the sandalwood. Unexpected uh, in some ways, but really interesting. And again, this really almost is like more so than, than many of the brands I've reviewed. Boy Smells almost feels in some ways like the complexity and the intensity and the balanced depth of bright light into deep heaviness that Boy Smells brings uh, as, as just like a fragrance house reminds me more of body fragrances where this almost seems like you're getting a candle version of a body fragrance because from what I've smelled, almost any of them could be body fragrances. You can't say that for all candle companies. I mean, you don't want like peanut butter marshmallow necessarily from, you know, one of the, the more sort of mass market uh, brands. You probably wouldn't want to wear a peanut butter marshmallow scent necessarily. Some people, I mean, maybe you would, uh, but it's not a fine fragrance. Whereas these are sort of fine fragrances that um, you could see in, in suit, in, you know, wearing as a, a scent as personal fragrance. All told, I'd recommend it. I really enjoy it. If you want, again, rich, spicy, green, fresh, but with a, a heaviness to it that is definitely going to uh, bring balance, then I would go for Park Life from Boy Smells. So let me know what you think. If you've sniffed this, if you have any of the others from anything in Boy Smells, frankly, but specifically the Hypernature Collection, I'd love to hear uh, your thoughts on those. And until next time, take care.